Well, good afternoon and thanks for watching THV 11 News at Noon. I'm Hayden Balgaby. Michael Aaron has the day off. Corrales Ortiz, however, is here, but I don't know if we needed you today. You should have taken the day <laughs> off. What is it? 70 and sunny. sunny. There's your weather. There you go. Bye. You guys don't need me anymore. <laughs> no, honestly, yeah, this is picture perfect it's weather. Amazing. amazing. I, I was off for the last few days on vacation. Came back to this Good nice, crisp weather. Brought it back with you. I, I know, right? It's amazing, honestly. <laughs> but yeah, essentially, we still have uh, this weather for the time being. We don't have really mm. huge changes in the forecast, but it was definitely off to a chilly start. Another one this morning, we were in the 40s, even a few spots in the 30s, I can Clinton, Arkadelphia, upper 30s there, definitely very chilly. We warmed up nicely throughout much of the morning. We're sitting at 67 right now here in Little Rock. Most places upper 60s to low 70s. But well, you can kind of see there's a few clouds up there kind of moving on through. We aren't going to be seeing a whole lot more compared to what we saw this morning. We'll continue to kind of clear on out into the afternoon hours. So here's a look at your Monday planner, especially if you plan to head out to the fair throughout much of the day. Looking fantastic highs around 74 for us here in Little Rock. Plenty of clear skies going into the evening hours. Nice and cool weather with another cool night in store. So looking absolutely fantastic once again. A full look at your forecast is coming up. Former Secretary of State and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Colin Powell has died. The 84-year-old died of complications from COVID-19. He was fully vaccinated but battled underlying conditions. Meg Oliver takes a look back at Powell's extraordinary life of service. When President Bush appointed Colin Powell as Secretary of State, he became the highest ranking African American official in the history of the United States. His was a true American success story. His parents were Jamaican immigrants who raised him in the South Bronx. After graduating from the City College of New York, he took an Army commission and served in Vietnam. He rose in the ranks, becoming a general, and was appointed the head of the National Security Council by President Ronald Reagan. More honors were to follow. During the next administration, President George Herbert Walker Bush made Powell chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff, the highest military position in the Defense Department. Again, Powell was the first African American to hold the post. Operation Desert Storm in 1991 made Powell an even more familiar face. Our strategy to go after this army is very, very simple. First, we're going to cut it off. When he retired from the Army, Powell wrote his autobiography and shared America's Promise, a nonprofit organization dedicated to building character in young people. There was speculation he might run for president, but his wife Alma was against it. Then Powell was called upon by George W. Bush. I am honored, honored to be given the opportunity to return to public service as the 65th Secretary of State. Though initially opposed to the idea, Powell agreed to go along with the Bush administration's plan to forcibly overthrow Saddam Hussein. Using his greatest asset, his popularity with the public, he went before the United Nations and the world to build a case for invading Iraq. Saddam Hussein and his regime are concealing their efforts to produce more weapons of mass destruction. Later, after the United States was firmly entrenched in the war, inaccuracies were found in Powell's speech, and the Bush administration said it acted on faulty intelligence. Powell admitted the U.N. speech was a painful blot on his record and pushed for reform in the intelligence community. I'm so proud that I have had this chance to serve my nation. In 2008, the longtime Republican made news when he endorsed Barack Obama for president. Powell spent his final years in the private sector, but he remained vocal on political issues that were important to him. Meg Oliver, CBS News, New York. Later today, Pine Bluff's police chief will address this weekend's violent shootings that left one person dead and at least a dozen others hurt. One of the shootings happened early Sunday morning outside of a party at the Sahara Shriners Temple on Main Street. Videos from those just outside the venue show crowds of people running away from the scene. Arkansas State Police are investigating that shooting after Pine Bluff Police say one of their officers fired their weapon outside the temple. Meanwhile, today's press conference is set for 3 p.m. We will have a crew there to bring us the very latest on air and online. Nationally, jury selection is underway in Georgia for the murder trial of three men accused of killing Ahmaud Arbery. The 25 year old black man was running through a neighborhood in February of 2020 when the defendants chased him in their trucks. He was shot to death after a struggle. Omar Villafranca has the latest. 
demonstrators gathered in Brunswick, Georgia for the Justice for Ahmad march, a day before the beginning of the trial for the men accused of killing Ahmad Arbery. In February of last year, the state says the 25-year-old was out jogging in a Brunswick neighborhood when he was chased by three men, shot and killed. I do think that Ahmad was murdered because he was black. Um, he was jogging through a predominantly white neighborhood and he was targeted. It wasn't until the cell phone video of the confrontation was leaked and nationwide protests that the three men were arrested. Travis McMichael, the shooter, his father, Gregory McMichael, and the man who recorded the video, William Roddy Bryan, were all charged with murder, false imprisonment, and aggravated assault. Body camera footage obtained by our Jacksonville station, WJAX, shows Bryan after Arbery was shot. And I pulled out of my driveway, was going to try to block him. Uh, he was going all around it, and I made a few moves at him, you know, um, and he, he didn't stop. Gregory and Travis McMichael told investigators they thought the 25-year-old was a burglary suspect. The three defendants claim they were justified in chasing Arbery because they suspected him of committing a crime. We spoke to attorney Lee Merritt, who is representing Arbery's mother, Wanda Cooper Jones, in a separate civil case against the three men and others. What do you think this jury should look like? Well, it should reflect the diversity of uh, the Brunswick community. I have my concerns, being that the jurors will be picked from this community, but I'm hopefully that we'll get the right people in the right place to make the right decision. This jury selection process will take some time, as long as two weeks, because 1,000 people were summoned. Omar Villafranca, CBS News, Brunswick, Georgia. Turning now to COVID-19 in Arkansas, cases and hospitalizations continue to decline this week. The state reported 383 new cases of the virus yesterday. 462 people are still in the hospital fighting the virus. Meanwhile, five more deaths have been added to the state's total. But some good news, vaccinations continue to improve. Nearly 1.4 million people in the state have been fully vaccinated. Now this week, the FDA and CDC may approve booster shots for millions of Americans, giving them even more protection against the virus. An FDA advisory panel recommended the two boosters last week. It's now up to the FDA and CDC to give the final green light nearly a month after doing the same for Pfizer. And health officials are hopeful that the FDA will grant emergency approval for the 5 to 11 age group next month. Meanwhile, Dr. Anthony Fauci says Americans shouldn't hesitate to spend the upcoming holidays with their families if they are fully vaccinated. You can enjoy Halloween, trick or treating, and certainly Thanksgiving with your family and Christmas with your families. That's one of the reasons why we emphasize why it's so important to get vaccinated. His holiday recommendations come just two weeks after he said it was too soon to say whether Americans can gather for Christmas. Delivery delays continue to plague stores and consumers and a lack of truck drivers is to blame, but new technology could soon change that. Plus, it is THV 11 day at the Arkansas State Fair. We're catching up with our crew that's helping keep kids safe at this year's event. All that coming up after the break. And speaking of fair, we definitely are going to be having our fair share of fair fall weather today. I wonder how many alliterations I can get in there. But obviously, we're still off to a cool start for the week. I'll let you know if any changes are coming our way for this upcoming week. Just ahead. <laughs> 